good Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in Hello Jack, I'm James, welcome back to my channel We're going to talk about building servers now um, I'm going to, This video is going to be based around um, buying a Dell server to do the job um, We've got to customise build in mind So the, um, the viewer that was more interested in this basically wanted to say Well, I need to run a you know, farm print server um, an, an e email server and a Microsoft Exchange server to, for databases or a server to, for, to, to run a database so that to be Microsoft Exchange sorry, uh, my, my SQL server um, now with it Microsoft Exchange so it's a new one 2010 or if you've got the latest one it likes eating lots of physical RAM up so if you've installed 16 gig of RAM it will chew all that up and you get some sort of issues with like memory performance sometimes it can eat too much up, but it means Exchange runs super fast. So I would build Exchange server on a separate server itself. If you're running a database server, again, that's always best to run on itself. That has all the power to um, serve that database. And I'll keep file and print server um, separate as well. So in theory, you need to look at three servers at least. So they're all dedicated to each other. You can chuck them all onto one server, but it's going to cause a lot of memory issues. It's going to cause problems. If you exchange if you exchange crashes, it's going to take a data it's going to take a database down and your network down. If um, something happens to SQL Server, you need to work on it. It's going to get take the network down. So how you can look at it? So you throw it all in. It's basically putting all your eggs in one basket. So my rule of thumb is keep everything separate, especially the way Exchange works with RAM. Is it's got to be on its own box. So this is this. I'm going to build this server to show you what the minimum requirements are that will be be perfect for all servers. And my theory is, if you throw lots of memory in all your servers, um, you don't need massive dismount disk memory for s some of the servers, but you do for the others. And I'll explain why shortly. So each one can be slightly different build to each other. But it gives you a rough idea on cost, at least. So if you've got a budget in mind, this is not very good, because obviously this can be expensive. I've, I deal with Dell, because I've dealt with years, Dell over the years, and it's a server that I've always brought, never had any problems with. So if the customer's got money and you want to run out of and you want a third party to deal with the warranty, this is the way you go forward. So let's have a quick look at the spec. So for work, we go for server and storage networking. <clears throat> now we want um, shop for servers. And if you got if you can get depends on what you want to do, if you've got a rack server in mind, which I'll show you the rack version, um, you can also go for tower servers. So if you've got a small office. It doesn't have a rack to install it into, then you can use these, which can easily sit under a desk or on top of the desk. And you've got rack servers that GMAP, a very slim line they can mount in. Not much difference between it because wherever you configure the power edge tower servers for, you can get that in a rack version as well, which is rack version is nice, nice and easy, it's tidy. So um, I'll, show, I'll just go on the rack. So it comes in different forms depending on the server and what these are generally what Dell says this is an entry level one this is advanced premium and obviously third generation for more powerful hungry applications um, so I tend to sort of ignore that anyway and I go for the power edge R210 which is pretty good for front print server pretty good for using as an exchange and very good for using a database server so we, we, we're talking about 15 users in mind so this is pretty much um, a basic so £490 is normally the basic um, price, but we want to add in um, and choose our CPU. So we click on View All Options. And this server will actually install Windows 2000 Server uh, 2008 R2. So you want to carry on using that, or if you've already got a license for that, it will actually work, or you can actually have this installed with our 2012 server, if that's what preference is here. These are the deals that Dell are doing, so you can look at it, but we're going to stick to the very basic, which is a 490 pound model, and we're going to customize it. <clears throat> now, my rule of thumb is, whether it's a file print server, exchange server, or a database server, it's always good to stick as much CPU power as you possibly can get into it, because it's going to last, it's going to be quick. If you do end up going from 20 to 15 users, 25 to 30, 40 users, it means your server will handle handle it anyway, and normally um, lots of decent uh, CPU speed in it, and RAM will service all that for you. So something you don't have to go back and add in later. So on here, we I, I always look for a minimum four core um, CPU. So we go for this. I'm going to install the Xeon processor, 
we're going to go for the 3.5 gigahertz with a four core CPU. So that's an extra 120 pounds. Um, that's going to be perfect. And that will do all three boxes of ours. Now you can install RAM here with Dell. It's, it will cost you because Dell is pricing normally a lot more expensive. Um, I always buy the RAM as four gig and I install the RAM extra. For the moment, we're going to say we're going to get Dell to do it all. So we're going to put two eights in here, giving us 16 gigs. No, actually, we do four because we're going to maximize out. 32 gig is pretty good. So then that bumps the price up a bit. No, 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 let's go for let's go for two two eight. So we go got 16 gig RAM. 16 gig RAM is a good starting, um, good good starting. Wouldn't consider doing eight gig on its own. Um, at least 16. So 16 is great. That'll run farm print exchange. More RAM in exchange, the better. Again, more RAM on the data space is normally better. And if you want to look at doing a terminal server, then it's worth more RAM is always good in a terminal server. Um, depends on how many users you've got. For 15 users, it's not bad. So we're going to install, we're going to say that we, we use uh, the Windows 2000 R2 standard edition. And we can have a factory installed. Click on that to give you an idea on what it costs on licenses. Uh, is that the right one? No median. Yeah. When selecting Windows 10 R2, so you must select the factory install. That's fine. Now, these bits we don't need to worry about. I guess we're well, we need media kit anyway, so this allows you to give the disks to install at a later date as well. So I'll just standard media kit. And you can actually buy the media kit for downgrading to um, 2008 one as well, which is pretty good. So this, this rest of the bits we don't need to worry about because this is all about VMware. We're not going to talk about VMware at the moment. Um, and here you can choose the partition size for Dell. We're going to do mirror disks. And we're going to choose two, two terabyte mirror disks. So it's one terabyte. So depending on your four, 15 users, one terabyte storage is pretty good. That's the basic disks for terminal server. Right, run that'll be okay for exchange and database server as well. There's a lot of heavy databases I've in the past I've used. Don't always don't ever go with one terabyte. They always seem to be very sort of gig, gigabytes, maybe 20 gig in total. Not nothing longer than that. So that'll be pretty, pretty efficient. But later days you can always upgrade that. But it's always cheaper to buy your drives um, from another source rather than Dell because Dell, as you can see, the price on there they're really steadily high. But you can get that much cheaper if you buy them separately. They take standard discs like um, Western Digital as, as normal. So there's nothing particularly different about these drives. These are normal common drives that they'll use this anyway. So that's fine. We've got our two drives. We've got um, mirror discs. Um, the iDrax is the management card, but we won't more worry about that moment. We're just going to do a basic, the basic settings. We don't need any additional um, network cards because it always comes with two anyway. Um, here you can actually have a, this is a proper RAID adapter, but this one comes with software RAID, uh, which is cheaper. You can have hardware RAID, but it takes additional card slots up. So if you decide you want to add another bank of network cards in there, you won't have the space for it. So we leave that off. Now if we go a bit further down, it comes with standard DVD, and that's all the bits we need. We just now to look at licenses for um, Windows. So we get further down. And it should give us the is it under this section. Hack, rack, rack. No, I think it's the next one along. Yeah, give us um. So this is the warranty. <clears throat> so it comes with one year uh, next business day warranty. But if you decide you need admission critical, so they come within two hours to repair it or four hours to repair it, you can actually upgrade it from here. So we can leave this. I always leave it standard warranty because you can always upgrade that later date anyway. But you can see the cost on there of upgrading it to like two hours once time, four hours once time. Price to get, gets a bit pricey, especially over the years as well five years, three years, or one years. So we go down. We don't need any of this on here. This is all extra bits. They're trying to shove it in your face. <laughs> so here we've got 15 users. So we need three packs of five because they come in five user packs, not 13. Three update. Oh, there you go. £120 for five years pack um, each. So um, that's three times, that's about 400 quid plus 400 quid extra on top. 
Um, and that's everything we need on this side here. So we add to that basket. Now, <clears throat> this is see this is the schedule of discount here. So we're making savings on this box. So this is be your standard build for all your three servers. Uh, so if you're running Farm Print, Microsoft Exchange, and uh, SQL Server, uh, you need three servers. <clears throat> now, if you want Terminal Server, you can actually say, right, we'll put Farm Print Server. Um, with the with the Microsoft Exchange, so we can have that as one box. But always make sure your um, database server and your terminal server are different boxes, because terminal server is where the user is going to be logging into. So that, so you can't really run anything else on top of that. It has to be dedicated as a terminal server box. And your database server again needs to be on itself because if you run that on the Exchange or combine them together. You find it run, it'll be running out of memory all the time and you'll be struggling and trying to sort of like sort things out is headache. So so let's say we think so if we so let's run the farm print server and exchange on top of each other so it minimize how many boxes we actually do need. So on this one we need three of these to update the total. There we go. So for with VAT on top of that, or if you're another country you can not gonna have VAT, you're looking about six thousand pounds. Again, we need to spend a little bit extra to add um, a bit more, or to change the drives out to one terabyte to two terabytes. Um, but yeah, you probably only need to do that on a couple of the boxes. But this just gives you just an idea, figure on cost. So for three ser for three servers running farm print and exchange on one box, tunnel server on another box, and you're on a dedicated database server. You're looking at sort of just under six grand, fair bit of money, but it gives you, gives you an idea. So the next video we're going to do, we're going to show you how you can spend less and get more and have all the, the power of what these boxes do give you and obviously some redundancy as well in there, but not spending a fortune doing it. So if you've got money in a big budget and it's uh, a big company, you know you're going to expand, you want something robust and you don't want to spend all day like repairing stuff, putting things in backs and forwards. You just say, right, boxes are built, they're installed, any hardware issues, we're just throw it back at Dell, this is a solution to go for. So, and it's under six grand budget. So, hope you enjoyed that. If you do, hit the like button, remember to subscribe, and the next video will be how we do all this a bit more cheaper. Thanks for watching guys, cheers.